All uh, right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today I kind of want to put this thing to bed. Okay, yesterday or over the weekend, sorry, I should say, I put out this video. The ETF marks the top, and I've been talking about this over and over and over again. And frankly, I'm sick of hearing my own voice on this. Yesterday, or sorry, on Saturday when I posted this video. I made it quite clear that this was more of a thought experiment, okay? And I'm just trying to stay open to all possible outcomes. And for the most part, okay, this is, I called it part two, but this is more like part 1.5. Like, I'm not going to spend as much time on this, as, anyway near as much time on this as I did yesterday or over the weekend, why do I keep saying that? First of all, I want to say well done to most of you for thinking, okay? There were some really, really good comments, really, really good comments. And comments ranged across the spectrum from 200 IQ all the way down to activate Windows, okay? And uh, people saying, oh, don't listen to a guy that pirates his Windows illegally. Look, okay, if you're gonna throw stones, at least at least know what you're talking about first, okay? Installing Windows without a license is not illegal, okay? So go away, get out of here, all right? We don't need this. But for the most part, there was plenty of highly informed, highly intellectual comments and discussion, and I really enjoyed that and appreciate that. So thank you for everyone that posted something other than activate Windows. Um, this was the number one comment that I thought we have to highlight. And I'll let you read this. <laughs> Ironic, right? I could talk for, what, 24 minutes? And that is all some people have to say. That's absolutely fine. Anyway, these people are just not going to make it. So in summary, okay, this video from the weekend was indeed just a thought experiment. Now, I'm not married to any idea. As I said, I still maintain that I have no idea what's going to happen. I just want to be ready to react to every possibility. I also thought it's worth pointing out, okay, based on the comments that you should remember, I am more incentivized than most people to have a standard shape with a higher top. I want this ETF moonshot more than anyone. Believe me, okay? Believe me. I want the ETF to be approved and us to go straight to a million bucks a coin. That's what I want, okay? I will be posting videos from my super yacht when that happens. I'm not joking, okay? I seriously am not joking. I am more incentivized than most people to have a higher top, okay? So don't think that I'm wishing and praying and hoping that we get a left translated cycle peak. OK, also, I'd like you to keep in mind that my life would be a lot easier not to be contrarian. OK, it would be much easier for me to just post Moonboy videos all the time and tell you about altcoins that are going to do a thousand X and blah, blah, blah. But it's just not in my nature. OK, it's not in my nature. I think I've proved that time and time again on this channel. If you watch my content daily, if you tune in, if you speak to any of the channel OGs, they will back me up that I've often been contrarian and that has often worked out for me. It works out more often than it doesn't, okay? Now, the last thing I wanted to point out before I just answer a couple of questions that everyone seemed to have is this A4 print. What is this A4 print? On a whiteboard in my office, I have an A4 printed out picture of Bitcoin and I've taken a photo of it for you, okay? I thought this would be interesting. I thought this would be useful to point out to people. So, you know, I'm not just being different here. OK, take a look at this chart. This is a monthly Bitcoin chart. And this was printed out by me just after we had that C19 plunge. OK, and as you can see, this is how many candles we had at the time. Now, I want to draw your eyes to a couple of things. Number one, we were expecting or I was expecting, I should say, that we were going to get a peak up here. And sure enough, we did, right? We got a distribution top and then a bear market low somewhere in this neighborhood around the end of 2022. Of course, the absolute bear market low came in in November and then we had a 60 day consolidation cycle and off we went, okay? And by this time I had a YouTube channel and I publicly along the bottom and happy days. But the reason I'm bringing all this up is again, look how long I've had this chart for, okay? Printed out on my whiteboard in my office. What do you see here? Because I see a left translated cycle top followed by the implied three year first true secular bear market for Bitcoin. OK, so when I say this is in my nature, this is not some idea I have conjured up for views, as some people like to imply. This is not me being different for the sake of being different. This has been the base case, OK, since just after the C19 sell off. So understand that when I say this is my base case, this really is my base case. And until proven wrong, then it's right. Now, it could certainly be proven wrong. As I've said over and over again, we don't need to get into any more repeating. Just go and watch yesterday's video if you're unsure. But to kind of close this off, what I hope will be closing this off and then we can just let it either play out or not play out or become invalidated. There's one question that plenty of people had and I didn't really cover it in yesterday's video. I didn't really cover it at all. And that is, wouldn't BlackRock be incentivized to have a pump? Do they not make more money from a pump than from launching their ETF and crashing the price? And the simple answer, the oversimplified answer is yes. They get a percentage, say one or 2% for managing the ETF, and then they will probably take a performance fee as well. So since both of these things are true, obviously 1% of a bigger number, so assuming their management fee is indeed 1%, 1% of a bigger number is a bigger number, isn't it? So they will make more money if the price of Bitcoin goes up. They will also make more in theory from the performance fee if Bitcoin does Bitcoin things and the ETF causes a massive pump. 
So again, low brain power suggests that yes, they will make more money if they pump this thing. But I want to say to those people that are convinced that just because these oversimplified thought processes are true, that means the only outcome is that BlackRock want to pump Bitcoin. You need to go and remember that BlackRock play 5D chess whilst everyone else plays checkers. Okay, they are in this for the long game. And for all we know, the long game is only a few years in. Okay, they may well have had a 20 year plan for Bitcoin that started by accumulating Bitcoin as early as 2012 or 2015. Nobody knows. Okay, and I've put Aladdin here. If you don't know what Aladdin is, then you are unqualified to make comments about BlackRock. Okay, you know so little about how the game is played that you should just keep your mouth shut and go and do some research. Okay, so for anyone that has not heard of BlackRock's Aladdin, then that is your homework. In fact, just click off of this video now and go and do two hours of research on Aladdin, okay? Then, once you understand how BlackRock really operates, okay, once you understand that they have over $50 trillion in assets and they only report about 11 of those, once you understand how the game is really played and how psychopathic the world is and how the world is entirely run by complete lunatics, only then can you come back here and start implying that I don't know what I'm talking about, okay? So, like I said, if you don't know what Aladdin is, go and research that. Like I said, they play 5D chess whilst everyone else plays checkers. So, whilst in theory, yes, BlackRock want a higher price because then they can get more performance fees and more management fees, the absolute truth of the matter is they could well be playing a far longer game here and they may well decide that they want to use the ETF in the short term to create the illusion that Bitcoin has died and thus try to accumulate as much Bitcoin as they can. Also, a lot of people have been saying, yeah, well, they need the money, they're gonna upset their clients. How can they advise their clients and then just rob them? Well, first of all, this market is so small that BlackRock doesn't care, okay? <laughs> BlackRock does not care. And it's also possible that they can still return value even if they nuke the price, okay? Even if they strip demand, why? Because if they really have bought Bitcoin far lower down, and they do, in theory, use it as a distribution tool at the top, okay? Just like, by the way, let's not forget, in 2017, the launch of the futures ETF marked the exact top. And at the bear market lows that we've just seen as of last year, what instrument was launched that marked the exact bottom? It was, of course, the ProShares Ultra Short Inverse ETF. They launched that at the bottom to encourage people to short the bottom right before we moved higher, okay? So don't think that these ETFs don't have a history of marking tops and bottoms because they absolutely do. But assuming BlackRock did accumulate a bunch of Bitcoin much, much lower, and they are gonna use it to distribute to the top, then they have made a massive profit in terms of percentage, and thus some of this could still be returned to its ultra high net worth clients. It doesn't have to necessarily dump on them, it just has to strip demand from the Bitcoin market. Now, is that feasible or is performance only returned based on the asset price? I don't know. But one thing I do know is you should not make the mistake of thinking BlackRock cares about its clients. It doesn't, it only cares about hoovering up the entirety of every asset on the planet. So again, if you don't understand this, then go and do your research on Aladdin. And finally, people had a lot of questions about what about this cash creates thing? Well, cash creates, means that they have to use one of their regulated and nominated custodians and exchanges to acquire the Bitcoin for the spot ETF. It means they can't use unregulated or OTC markets to acquire the Bitcoin, right? But to my mind, there's probably a way around this. There's probably a way around this that doesn't prevent them using the ETF as a distribution tool. And that is, since we know that their nominated exchange and custodian is likely gonna be Coinbase or Fidelity, BlackRock may well have been accumulating Bitcoin via those two asset managers and exchanges for a long time. They may well have just been buying all of their Bitcoin and accumulating all their Bitcoin through Coinbase for ages. And that means that when they go to offload it as part of this whole ETF distribution tool hypothesis, they could still be operating from within inside the cash creates boundary, okay? So don't make the mistake of thinking this actually prevents them doing this sign of jiggery pokery, okay? They can do whatever they want, they're BlackRock. This is what people don't seem to understand. And again, it goes back to this, go and look up Aladdin. If you don't understand what Aladdin is, then you're not really qualified to talk about how psychopathic BlackRock is as an asset firm. They only want to play the long game. They only care about acquiring all the assets and they do not care about making their clients money. They don't, okay? Especially in the short term. And like I said, they possibly still could return the value to the shareholders because if they've accumulated a bunch of Bitcoin for hundreds or a few thousand dollars a coin, and they're gonna sell it for six figures at the top, then they could return some of that to their shareholders as a, just trust us bro, hold for a few years. And then eventually, once they've changed the shape of the cycle, wrecked everyone, accumulated all the Bitcoin down here, then they could have the real super cycle to the multiple millions and only the high net worth individuals would still be in this space, okay? so. Again, I'm just saying it's a hypothesis. I'm absolutely not married to any one particular idea, 
but also it's certainly, in my opinion, low brain power to just look at this and say they're incentivized to have a pump. Like I said, I'm incentivized for them to have a pump, okay? We all want the mega pump, but if you are married to one idea, if you are not fluid, if you're not flexible, then you stand to be blindsided. So I hope that clears that up. I had one last question, which should just take about 30 seconds to dispel. And people were saying, aren't we doing what we did in 2019? Meaning, aren't we about to come back and retest the lows? Aren't we about to have this crash back here? And to that, I say, no, probably not. And here's why, okay? 2015, this is 2015 right here. What do we have? We had a bottom range, okay? Then breakout retest and we form another range again. And then breakout retest, we form another range, breakout retest and go. And if we fast forward to today, that's what we've got. A range, breakout retest, range, breakout, working on that retest and possible range before breakout retest and go. And if we do something like this, that would be a standard four year halving shape, right? That everyone is expecting. That's what everyone would be expecting. The standard four year halving shape. In my opinion, we are doing nothing similar to what we did back here. Why? Because you can see we had a range, breakout, no retest, no further range, just straight into a parabola, followed by, at some point, a retest of that range before we go. Now, why is this also incredibly different? Because for this to occur, we needed a black swan event. You know what it was, the C19 plunge, okay? We don't have those conditions today. We do not have any, we don't have a similar structure. We're probably not going to have a black swan that takes us back down here. Maybe a black swan could show up and maybe we do get a retest, but structurally, this is nothing like this, and it's actually exactly like this. And as you can see from here, at no point did we revisit the lows once we'd broken out of the range, broken out of the range, broken out of the range. So I hope that answers that. For those of you that are wondering, is 2019 gonna repeat? In my humble opinion, no, no it is not. So with all that said, I hope to put this idea to bed. I'm kind of stuck on my own voice on hearing that, as I've shown you with that printout that I've had on my whiteboard for years now, you know, this has been the base case, okay? This has been the base case, and I've frankly done it to death, haven't I? So we're just gonna move back off of this for a while. We're gonna let this sit, let this simmer. The good news is, if we go to the hard right edge of this chart, we're gonna get an answer pretty soon, aren't we? We're either gonna continue in a parabola, in which case I accept this hypothesis, or we're gonna range in here, in which case we just scratch it off and say, nope, we're not doing that. Either way, we're gonna get to find out soon. Like I said, I've done this idea to death, and we're kind of just gonna put it out there in the ether now and leave it. And of course, if it continues to play out, then we can come back. And if it becomes invalidated, we can come back. But for now, like I said, I'm kind of sick of this. I'm sure you guys are as well. I think it was a nice idea. I think it was a conversation worth having, but hopefully that is the end of that. Looking at some charts, right? Dollar still coming off, happy days. And yields still breaking down, aren't they? So happy days should set us up for a nice rally in the stock market this week. So we'll see if we can get that, of course. Oil still bleeding and gold not looking super strong, is it? So my intuition here seems to be right for gold so far. Now that is not to say that we couldn't fly up here and get an all-time high break. And again, I will get long if we do. But so far, my intuition kind of tells me that we we're going to roll over. And I think that's probably what we're going to do. Same for silver, isn't it? So natural move into resistance and a logical rejection there. Can it break through? If so, then we've got the line long lined up. But for now, again, not looking super strong, is it? Miners not really looking super strong either. So we'll see. I think the focus should still be on the cryptocurrency and the stock market. The risk assets should fly under these circumstances. We've got Bitcoin still grinding around here, haven't we? So coming into focus, right? About three weeks until that cycle low is still scope for a big upside push before we get down there. But also we may well have seen the high for this cycle. Nobody knows. One thing I do know is once we get into this timing window, it will be time for me to add more longs. And that includes the miners as well and move stops up, of course. So overall, here's to a good week. I hope you're all doing well in life. And until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.